Good morning, church, and welcome to this time of worshiping our great God together. Friends, I don't know what draws you to this space this day, but I do know that God hears and that our God responds to the cries of our heart. So let us cry to the Lord together this day with the call to worship. We are bursting with God news. We are dancing our salvation. Nothing and no one is holy like God. No rock mountain like our God. Let us come together and declare like Anna, God will set things right all over the earth. Would you join me in an attitude of prayer? Oh Lord, there truly is no one like you, O oh God. That no one who we will ever meet will even come close. For you are creator, provider, healer. You are the source of all goodness and truth. And so, O oh Lord, this day we come together seeking to just be in your holy presence. Asking, O oh Lord, that this time shape us as your people. And then, O oh Lord, sends us out to proclaim all about you, near and far, all for the sake of your kingdom. And so, Lord Jesus, we once again give you our hearts this day. We give you this time of all the adoration and praise that you are doing. And, O oh Lord, we offer our prayers of change. All in Jesus' most precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, we're going to be talking about Hannah today, the mother of Samuel, who is so important in the turning point of Israel's history. And Hannah has this beautiful song that we'll get to hear together that talks about how powerful our Almighty God is. And yet sometimes we act as if we are the powerful ones. We act as if we are the ones in control. And so for those times that we, O oh Lord, have not turned to you first, for times that we have relied upon our own strength alone, let us come together in an attitude of confession. And we pray together saying, Lord, we confess that sometimes we think that the power of this world rests in our hands. We want things to be our way, in our timing. Yet you, O oh Lord, know our needs before we even ask and bring comfort to you in all, of comfort to us in all times and places. If only we look to you, and your power alone. Let us be reminded that this is your world, O oh Lord, and send us out to serve you. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Praise be to God. For the last several weeks, my friends, we have been journeying together with some confirmands along the Apostles' Creed, and we will continue, continue journeying well into November. But as they are learning about their faith, it is the same faith that we come and affirm today as this community of faith spread far and wide. So friends, let us join together with the saints throughout the ages, as we said. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 99. And it speaks why God is worthy of all praise. And so, friends, I invite you to hear these words and think of what you want to praise God for this day. The psalmist writes, The Lord is King. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. My king, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord for God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. He, they kept his decrees in the statutes that he gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God then, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Amen and amen. Friends, our hymn for reflection this day is not necessarily one that we sing in church very often, but it speaks so deeply to the cry of Hannah's heart as we will be turning our attention to her story in a moment. So let us read it together and then pray upon the words of Heal Us, Emmanuel. Hear our prayer. Hear us, Emmanuel. Hear our prayer. We wait to feel thy touch. Deep wounded souls to thee repair. And Savior, we are such. Let us pray. Well, awesome God, as we turn to you in a prayer this day, I keep hearing the words of Bishop Mark, that you alone, O Lord, are the healer of our brokenness, redeemer of this world, and Savior. And so, Lord, we cry out to you this day to save us, to bind up our brokenness, to set this world right again. Lord, this is the cry of our heart. This day and always, in Jesus' name, amen. If you'll give me one moment, we're going to join each other together for our children's message.
Good morning, everyone. I hope that you are having a wonderful day this week and a wonderful week as well. But I wonder what happens when we're not having such a wonderful week. When things don't go like we want, when we have some grumpy days, when some folk aren't treating us very kindly, then what do we do? Well, I don't know about you, but when I have really hard days, I pray. I pray to God because God not only hears me, but God is healer. Heal. What does it mean to heal? H-E-A-L. Well, when we think of healing, we often think about people who make us feel better. We think about doctors and nurses. We think about where we go when we just are feeling sick. But guess what? God also heals. God in the scripture says heals our brokenness. Not like our broken bones that we go to a doctor for, but things that the doctors can't always fix. Broken hearts, broken feelings. We can go to God and God is healer. That's a really big, big concept. That's a really big idea. And yet we're gonna hear a story about someone today that God healed, who God healed in a whole lot of ways. And her name is Hannah. And I hope that you'll listen to her story today and you will remember that God didn't just heal Hannah. God heals me and God heals you. Let's pray. Lord, we know when we turn to you in prayer that you don't just hear us, but oh God, you respond. That oh God, you do something about it. And it may not always be the thing that we think of, God, but you always think of what is best. And so God, we ask this day that in those places that our hearts are broken, in times when things are just not going well, that Lord Jesus, you would heal us. And that you would help us share that message of healing with others. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And remember, you can always turn to God in prayer. Church, we're going to turn together to the story of Hannah. And we're going to find that in 1 Samuel. We're going to jump around a little bit as we've done in the past, but we're going to start in 1 Samuel chapter 1, if you have a translation of the Bible that you'd like to follow along in. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Let us turn our attention to hearing God's word this day. First Samuel chapter 1, starting in verse 9. After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow. O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. Moving forward to verse 19. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their home at Ramah. Elna saw his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. And then chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Hannah prayed and said, 
My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren have borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit the seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful one, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. O oh Lord, his adversaries shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we ask that you allow us to sing and pray like Hannah. That, oh Lord, you would draw our attention to your saving grace this day. How you have entered into our hearts and changed our lives. And how, oh Lord, you are still changing us day by day. Lord, we ask that you speak to us. Speak not just to our heads, O Lord, but to our hearts. In Jesus' most precious name. Amen. I'm going to start off this week by saying something that may be a bit controversial, but here it is. I think that one of the worst things we can do in scripture is jump to the happy ending. Now, what do I mean by that? <laughs> when we only look at the parts of scripture where folk are full of joy and thanksgiving, where their prayers have been satisfied, we speak just so much of the breadth and depth, my friends, of what God is trying to reveal to us. Case in point, the woman we're going to talk about in scripture this day, Hannah. If we jump to the happy part, the happy ending of Hannah's story, we find that a woman who once was barren gives birth to a son who will be part of a changing in Israel's history. Praise be to God. But if we take time to more fully sink into Hannah's story, we find that there is so much more richness there to find not just about this woman, but perhaps about our lives, and most certainly about our God. Hannah was married to Elkanah. Now, she wasn't Elkanah's only wife. She was one of two. And the other woman, whose name was Penina, was bearing all the children in the household. In other words, Hannah was barren. She wasn't able to conceive children. And if that fact wasn't heartbreaking enough, Hannah was barren in a day when women only had really one purpose, to bear children. 
and more specifically, to bear male children to carry on the family legacy. And so this left Hannah feeling broken, angry, inadequate, filled with sorrow. A few months ago, I took a course offered by our district here in the State College area entitled Shared Sorrow, a faith community's response to grief and mourning. Here's a list of some of what folks experience during times of grief and mourning. Numbness, guilt, loneliness, sadness, anxiety, emptiness, vulnerability, fear, yearning, pain, anger, and bitterness. Now the list of what folk can feel goes on and on, but those are just some of the words that may encapsulate what Hannah is feeling in today's scripture passage. She was in a place of darkness. Even though that she was the preferred wife of Elkanah, and even though everything else in life seemed to be going well, there was a deep ache within her soul. A deep ache that, quite frankly, her husband couldn't fully understand. He tried to offer her words of comfort, but his words fell short. They missed the mark, and they rang so empty to her ears. It'd be like us going up to someone who is grieving and saying something like, at least, and then you fill in the blank. God always takes the best first. Don't you know God needed another angel? Or God gives the hardest battle battles to the strongest warriors. We may mean to be encouraging with those statements. We may need them as words to bring comfort, but often they fall short. They miss the mark. One day, in the midst of a party, Hannah is so overwhelmed that she simply leaves and goes to present herself before God. She is in this place where all she can do is cry out to God, and she is so singularly focused on that that she even walks right past Eli, the priest. She totally ignored the thing things were done in order to throw herself down before God in prayer. Her words weren't pretty. She didn't come to offer a sacrifice or even a petition. She came to present herself to the Lord in all of her brokenness and vulnerability and made a vow. If you, O oh God, give me a male child, he will be yours. He will serve you alone, God. What would lead Hannah to pray such a thing? It's an intertwining of so many things in her life. Her humiliation that she is the wife struggling with fertility. Her honesty before God. Her disgrace at a place in time when her worth in society was tied to what she could bear. Her anguish. But also her belief and her dependence upon God. Hannah didn't believe that God was some far off Force. No, God was intimately involved in the lives of his people. He cared about them. He cared about her. He cared about what happened to them. So she goes before God, the one who loves her most, and just poured out her heart in prayer. Friends, have you ever been there? Have you ever felt like Anna, where that is just what is pouring out of you? Sometimes when we are in a place of utter despair and brokenness, when all the fancy phrases and proper postures go out to the window, we simply throw ourselves down before the one who loves us more, most and pours out our heart. The biblical word for that is lament. And we talked about lament a few times during this particular season. 
when we have a hard time putting our suffering into words, we just come before God and cry out. Paul in Romans says that sometimes words just aren't going to cut it, and the Spirit intercedes for us when all we can do is groan. Lament is not a word we hear very often today outside of the church. Even when we know deep, deep down that we need a space to lament, sometimes no one taught us how, or no one gave us permission. No one made space when we had grief in our heart like that which Hannah was carrying. But Hannah comes right out to God with her lament and lays herself there. And here's what we often miss, church. Hannah's lament and laments in general are a radical act of hope. They come from a place of trusting God alone in utterly depending upon God. And Hannah's prayer, it was answered. She conceived and bore a son who she named Samuel, saying, I have asked him of the Lord. And then the tradition of Miriam after the defeat of the Egyptian army and what would become the tradition of Mary in singing her Magnificat, Hannah starts to pray. This is sometimes called Hannah's prayer or Hannah's song in our scripture today. And Hannah just starts to make all these declarations about who God is and what God is all about. Hannah takes no credit for this conception. She doesn't give her husband any credit for this conception. She gives all the glory and honor and praise to God. But she didn't just claim God's power and might in the miracle that's taken place in her life. She claimed it in all sorts of places where people experience victory. Not their victory, Hannah's quick to say, but the victory of the Lord. That's what her song of praise is all about. And friends, that is what we praise God for here and now today. It's so easy to read Hannah's story and skip to this part. But I think we need to sit a minute in our morning in order to fully appreciate all that God has done. I think we need to read Hannah's story and explore our own broken places in our lives, our own broken hearts and dashed dreams and places of deep longing in order to be reminded that God hears and that our God responds. And for those of us who may not currently be in a season of mourning, we still need this story, friends. We need it to be a reminder that compassion is at the center of God's core. We need to be reminded of the comfort that God brings. The comfort that you and I are called to share, but doesn't come from telling people not to be sad or just to get over something that has deeply wounded them, but instead sit with them in moments of honest prayer. In order to get to the praise, sometimes we need to sit in the morning. In order to get to the praise, we have to get through all of the messy middle church. In order to get to the place where we make meaning of our grief that we have or have, we need the freedom to cry out and lament to God. Because whether we are in the mountain or in the valley, my friends, God is still God. God is still God who cares about us, who loves us, who lets us come before him in honest prayer. If we just skip to the happy ending, we trick ourselves into thinking that the power of the story comes from the miracle, when really the power from the story comes from the God who is present all alone. Friends, I don't know what's on your heart today. But I want to give us space to cry out to God, to come before the God who knows you and who loves you, to come and just sit in the arms of your God. Friends, let us go into a time of prayer.
Lord is with us in the mountaintop, and in the valley, in our grief, and in our joy, and in the messy middle. Speak to our hearts, we pray. Amen. As we turn now to a time of prayer, I'm going to do things a little bit differently today. I'm going to offer a phrase or perhaps a word, and I'm going to invite you to just pray silently in your homes for whatever comes to mind around that particular sentence. Then I'm going to ask that God hears our prayer. Would you join me? Most awesome and gracious God, we come together and unite our hearts in prayer this day. We want to pray for all those who are grieving. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are carrying around heaviness in their hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who don't know where to turn, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who don't know what to say in prayers and don't know what to say in the company of family and friends. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the one who hears and you are the one who heals. And so, Lord, we ask that you bind up the broken places within us and that, oh Lord, you be the healing of all the wounded places in our lives as we come together as those who seek to follow you and pray today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us take a moment just to share some of the, the good work, the, the good soul searching that's happening in this parish and beyond. First, I want to remind you that Monday evening we offer a time of scripture and prayer on Facebook. And then on Thursday evening, we offer a Bible study on Zoom where we are working our way through the book of Genesis. And then we have a couple of different offerings this week that I, I want to lift up to you. Uh, on Sunday, we're going to continue with our confirmation class for our teenagers. Um, who want to become part of the church, and that is via Zoom in the afternoon. Monday will be Grace's Council meeting at the church at 7 p.m. And then on Saturday, there is going to be Paint and Pray that's offered at the Paint and Broad. You can contact me for more information about that. This week, we're going to be painting a, a picture of what God says over us. And that's going to be in the afternoon. And then the morning on Saturday, we're going to be offering a spiritual gifts workshop. And that's going to be both in person at Trinity and via Zoom. So if you're interested in any of those offerings, know that you can reach out to me. And also, friends, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being a people of hope. Folk who do sit with people in the midst of times that are just full of heartache. Times that you have reached
reached out to people in ways big and small, and they have made a difference that you may never know the full impact of. I want to thank you, friends, for who you are and for all that you give in the name of the Lord. Blessings upon you. And I want to send us out, my friends, with these closing words once again from Hannah. There is no holy one like our God. No one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Let us turn to the rock, our Lord, at all times.